Well, this week we're going to build the switch lanterns to go on the switch stands right. that we did in the previous show. We can't do it all at once, or the show would be six hours long. Maybe longer than that. It'll probably be longer than that. It's actually been going on now for months, actually building all this stuff mm -hmm. while we're socially distancing. Right. Anyway, this week we're building switch lanterns and targets, day targets, for the switch stands. So check this out. Well, we've been having some fun for quite a while building these switch stands. They're interesting. <laughs> They're really fun to build uh, the Logos Creek switch stand. I've built seven of these, but I'm planning to build some junk ones, and I broke one of these building nuts. <laughs> but over in the salvage yard, I want to have some, some beat up ones. Oh my word, there you go. That locks in place. Nice. Now, one thing that all switch stands need and have always had is some sort of flag or day target so that a train crew can see at a distance just exactly how the switch is lined without trying to study the points, <laughs> causing a derailment. Every railroad developed their own system, but the round target is pretty common and the uh, Lagos Creek kit comes with a round day target and I was considering using those, but they are designed to wrap around the stand where an actual day target is just a sheet of metal mounted to one side of the stand. And so I wanted to come up with something that more closely duplicates that. And in kind of fishing around, I found these on Amazon. They're stamping blanks for people who do uh, charm bracelets or dog tags or something. So I ordered a bunch of these in different sizes. Uh, the one at the upper left there is the one that comes in at the right size and everything. It's a little thicker than I'd like, but it's, it's just going to have to do. Now, rather than just glue this to the stand, I, I was afraid it would get knocked loose if it was just simply glued to one side of the stand. Uh, Karen took these and carved a channel into one side so that there's a little more surface area there for the stand to glue to. And that actually makes it incredibly strong. And once it's mounted in place, you really don't know that there's a channel there. It just looks like a sheet of metal uh, bolted to the stand. It's flat on one side and you can see the stand coming up through from the other side. Exactly the look that we were after. So I took a bunch of these over to the paint booth and shot some of the usual light gray automotive primer on them. I really wanted to try to put bullet holes in some of those targets because it seems like that's what people do. They use these for targets. Yeah, this is kind of the railroad version of the drive-by shooting. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but uh, it adds a certain amount of interest having bullet holes in there. It sure does. And uh, if you can figure out how to exactly duplicate that, I'll leave you to your own devices to figure out how to do that. We're going to figure it out. Well, here's my first attempt. I'm really glad these things come a dime a dozen. I'm, I'm not quite happy with the look. Well, this is not bad. I'm, I'll bet you figure it out. Now, some switch stands are so short, there's really no place to put a day target. There's really only space for the lantern. So uh, what they did with a lot of switch lanterns is rig the lantern itself with a day target. And this worked so well, a lot of railroads adopted this on all of their switch stands. Now, as we've mentioned in previous shows, we're casting all of the parts that we need, since we have our own casting system. Uh, this mold is something I made off of Lagos Creek uh, rail braces and tie plates. Now, this mold is mostly Ozark Miniatures parts. This is Ozark Miniatures version of a switch stand target. But up here we have the Ozark Miniatures Switch Lantern. And we're going to be using that and these day targets for the upper two thirds of the lantern because they turn out quite nice. Now the mold only makes two day targets with each two lanterns, uh, but that's okay. I'm not going to be using that many of these day targets on the lanterns. Uh, also, the lanterns don't really have a base to them. They're just open at the bottom. So I'm going to be scratch building the bottom third of each switch lantern. Now the lanterns have to be hollow inside and they generally come in cast uh, hollow, but there's a lot of burr inside them. And so I have to go through and core them out with drill bits. And they're so small and fragile. If I try doing this on the drill press, it just destroys them. So I'm just taking the drill bit and twisting it through there by hand 
and that way I can completely open up the inside of the lantern because uh, there's going to be a light shoved up in here and it needs to be completely open inside. As fragile as they are, I still end up bending a couple of them, but they're all going to go in the junk pile. <laughs> so I'm saving the damaged ones as well, just to use somewhere else as detail parts. Now it also requires cleaning up the inside of the day target, just carefully sizing that so that it easily slips onto the, the lens mount for the switch lantern itself. And I cast up enough of these that I can do two of my lanterns with the little day targets. But that's about all I actually want to use. The rest will just have lenses. Anyway, over to the paint booth to start getting some primer and some color on these guys. I certainly want to paint them before I put them together. The lanterns themselves are being entirely painted in old Floquil railroad colors, grimy black as it, as it happens. The day targets are all being painted with uh, acrylic paints, which I'm trying to master. I'm sort of starting to get the hang of, of these things and then weathered to look like they're just a little bit beat up and pitted with, with rust. Well, I've got a good collection, but I will be returning to the casting machine pretty soon because I, as a, I really need to have a lot of these. You can never have too many switch lanterns. At least that's my personal philosophy. They look kind of plain without handles, so I made some handles for them. Yeah, well, you're always doing jewelry, so... Yes, <laughs> plenty of right, wire. <laughs> right up your alley. Well, now we need lenses for the switch lanterns. You can see those rings on the back side of the glass. This is called a Fresnel lens, and it was used to focus the light directly toward the locomotive coming at the lantern. And I want to try to duplicate that effect, those rings on the back side of the lens. Now, the colors... It sort of depends. Different railroads use different colors. Uh, the most common colors being red, green, and yellow, but also white, purple, and blue were used on some railroads. And I'm sort of planning on making lenses in all of those colors, I think. Now, all of those colors are available as uh, translucent acrylic rods. So I ordered a bunch of different colors from Amazon. Anything I thought I might want to uh, make a lens out of. Okay, now how do I turn a translucent acrylic rod into a lens? Well, I need a lathe for that and I don't have a lathe. But I've seen these on the internet. It's kind of a little toy lathe that comes out of China. Uh, they sell for around 35 bucks. I, I grabbed this one off of eBay. I have seen these advertised for uh, for the exact same lathe for all the way out to like $350. The only problem with this $35 one is it came with a European cord. So I had to throw that away and get myself an American style cord. But it worked with the same power supply. Worked fine. So here's what that process looks like. I had to cut off little short sections of the rod so that I could mount those in the lathe chuck and then turn those down to the proper diameter so that they would fit inside the lens mount for the individual switch lanterns. Once I had the diameter of the lens down, I could start actually shaping the, the contours of the lens. So shaping first the outside of the lens, which has quite a dome to it, I'm just using a file here, and then I switch over to buffing files. Uh, they're mounted on kind of a foam rubber back. Boy, do they work great for doing this kind of work. These are my favorite files because they have four different grits. They work well in uh, modeling and jewelry making. I've, I've seen them in the hobby shops, but we got these out of Germany, and I think they're a much better design. Oh, those are the best. Yeah, I, they're not on their website right now. They seem to be out of stock, but I hope they get them back oh, in. No kidding. Because these are, these are the best. Uh, it does tend to build up a lot of heat doing this, and I had to be careful it didn't burn right through the, the buffing board. Right. <laughs> and for that matter, melt the lens. You just have to kind of go easy with the, the pressure here so that it doesn't overheat. Okay, now the trickiest part of the whole thing, and that's cutting the back side of the lens because I'm trying to duplicate those, those rings, just, just sort of, just to get a sense of them. So I'm coming in with a very small, very sharp tool, 
and then I do stair step cuts till it cuts free. <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere. And I can usually get one or two sort of rings cut into the back side of it. Uh, you don't get to ever see the back side. And when you view this from the front, uh, it's so darn small, it does tend to look like a Fresnel lens. I, I, I find it acceptable. Wow, that really does look like a Fresnel lens. Doesn't it? Well, they're so small, you can't get that good of a look at them. And each one of these I make turns out a little bit better than the one before. Oh, wow. So I'm pretty happy about them. I want to try doing some of the other types of lenses for locomotive marker lights, too. Well, that should be fun. Because I think this technique's going to work for all kinds of different lenses. But so far, I'm really happy with these. I'd really like to try out this little lathe. It's fun. It looks like it. Yeah, not much to it, but it's great. Wonderful. Okay, now I need to scratch build the base of the individual lanterns. And uh, that's also going to be the mount that mounts it to the switch stand. And I'm using these KNS brass shapes that you can pick up at the hobby shops. Now I'd cord the lantern out so that this particular tube would fit neatly up inside the, the lantern. And if you know uh, anything about KNS shapes, they're designed so that they telescope inside each other. So the large tube forms a ring that mounts up inside the lantern, and then the font section of the lantern is going to be the next size down so that it comes out just like this. So as with the switch stands, I'm silver soldering the whole thing together using Stay Bright Silver Solder. I can't solder to the lantern itself or I'd melt the lantern. And then the very base part of that is a piece of KNS square tube. And I've had to round the corners off on that until it fits neatly up inside the round tube. The old square peg in the round hole trick, which I first perfected when I was three. Anyway, now the lantern will slide neatly down on top of the central shaft from the switch stand. And then I don't have to actually glue it or anything. It friction fits on there tight enough that I can put my lantern on and remove it for servicing should I need to replace the LED. Now, the original switch lanterns on the railroad were also removable because they had to be taken off the switch stands for servicing. They are just kerosene lanterns after all. Anyway, in pretty short order, I started generating a lot of little switch lanterns to go onto the switch stands. Switch lanterns and targets, here's how they compare to the reference switch stand, which is just outside the door of Garage Mahal. Wow, this really looks like our switch stand. I would think it's, you know, real. Yeah, I think the colors are right and the lens looks right. Everything just looks right. Okay, let's light the lantern and see how it looks lit up. Now this is the lamp that I'm using, an 0402 LED. They're a surface mount LED. I get them out of China because it's a lot cheaper that way, but Woodland Scenic sells them and some of the hobby shops have them. But they're super, super, super bright and teeny, 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 tiny. By buying them out of China, I can get about 40 of these for somewhere around oh, 10 or 15 bucks. The wires are super, super fine, which in this case is important because they have to go down through the tube of the switch stand. Uh, two of these switch stands, unfortunately, sit right on top of the, the bench work, right on top of one of the braces for the bench work. So the wires actually have to sort of stagger over about an inch before I can drill a hole down through the, the layout here and come out the bottom without hitting that brace. It's a bit tricky working with these really, really small wires, but as you can see, uh, they fit down through the switch stand with tons of room left over. Everything is so much smaller than it needs to be. These LEDs are just impossibly tiny. They tell me you can save money by soldering this yourself. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Anyway, look how bright they are when they come on. I've seen some modelers use these to simulate an arc welder. I mean, they're that bright. Now, originally I thought about using a grain of rice bulb, which is a really small incandescent bulb, but that won't even fit inside the lantern. The LEDs are this much smaller than a grain of rice bulb. Now they're so darn bright that they're actually too bright, I think, for the lanterns. 
Now they are dimmable and I'm going to experiment with different resistors to bring the brightness down. But what I did find I can do is just tuck the LED down into the base, the little font section of the lantern, and then it doesn't just blow out the lenses. It actually looks quite nice. I really like the lights in these. Man, that looks real. You know, that's when they really come to life. No kidding. You turn the light on exactly. inside. And wow, miniature village. Miniature village. I remember uh, as a kid going down to the yards and to me that was one of the most exciting things going on down there at night was you just see hundreds of these switch lanterns out there glowing in the dark. Well, I've always loved lanterns anyway. <laughs> And they work great, too. They do. <laughs> I just love seeing the whole lantern rotate around in the day target. Man, it's, it's the real deal. There it comes, yes. Now, the main lighting here is provided by controllable LED strips up in the overhead, and that's all controllable by software here on my phone. Uh, we did a show on how that whole thing works. But that way I can dial up different brightness, different colors for the daylight and really bring this to life. Well, so that's the switch lanterns. Wow. Wow. So, it's a lot more work to do. Again, we, we hooked up one and we made some lenses. We've got a whole bunch of lenses to make and a whole bunch of switch lanterns to make and more switches to lay. And eventually we're gonna have an entire switching yard with the necessary targets and with the necessary lanterns and it'll all be hooked up to the power supply and it'll all just work. And then we can actually hook electricity to the track right. <laughs> and try driving a train around. Yes. Which I've been avoiding doing because if I do that, I'll start playing with the trains and then That'll nothing will the get done. So I'm intentionally not hooking up power to the track until everything else is done. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, here comes the blue button to make you a subscriber. Are we ready? Join. You see the blue button? That will make you a subscriber. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with the Tuesday Show. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>